uh, Balt Springs uh, School District. Uh, they um, suspended this young man uh, over his hair, saying that they have uh, rules. The hair should not be um, past the ears. Here's the problem. He does not wear his locks down. He actually wears them up. Well, guess what? Uh, that's unsatisfactory for the school district. And so he's been, has had in-school suspension. Uh, and there's been lots of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth uh, with them and activists and lawyers. And now the school district has said, okay, you know what? We're going to take this thing further. They're now sending him to a disciplinary alternative education program. Right. 18-year-old Daryl George is a junior at Barbers Hill High School in, actually, I'm sorry, is in Mount Bellevue. Again, he's been suspended since August 31st. Now, he was told to attend an alternative school program from October 12th through November 29th for, quote, failure to comply with multiple campus and classroom regulations. His mother, Demisha George, uh, joins us right now, along with Daryl. Glad to have both of you here. I, I, what I understand, Demisha, is, first of all, this school district, uh, they are fighting the, Texas, the Crown Act in Texas. Uh, they say it doesn't apply to hair length, but the bill deals, deals with hair discrimination. What the hell else do you call this? Oh, I, I call it some BS. They're just trying to get around. They're trying to do wordplay on the Crown Act and trying to just, they, they want us to, they want to break us down and for us to move out the district. And that's not going to happen. Uh, Daryl, what has been the effect on you? I mean, clearly, uh, it's not like you want to be involved in legal skirmishes, constant back and forth, letters being suspended. Uh, has it had an impact on you in the classroom? Yes. How so? Uh, I haven't been able to learn anything. And so even when you're in school suspension, um, what, are you not getting your education there? Or what, are you not in the classroom? No. This is, um, are there, what I'm, what I'm confused by, uh, and Demisha, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, do you believe that uh, district officials have decided we're just gonna dig in our heels and we are going to make life as difficult as possible for Daryl to get him to relent and cut his locks. Yes, yes, I feel like they're they're picking and picking and picking till they, they want to see him break down. They want to see us break down, but we're not doing it. We're not we're not giving up this fight. We're going to stay here to the end, and that's what they're not liking. So they're throwing these accusations. They're throwing these uh, whirlwinds of referrals out of the wherever to say he got to go to DAP, but y'all, y'all haven't given me, y'all haven't given me any referrals. Y'all haven't given me the referrals saying that he was disruptive. He was this, he was that. Remember, they forget that they, they supposed to give me everything in documentation and they haven't gave it to me. So basically they're lying on my child to get him in DAP. Trying to, they trying to put him in for something else other than his hair. When it all boils down to his hair. Allie Booker with the Booker Law Firm is, uh, uh, your, is uh, your attorney. She joins us right now as well. Uh, Allie, do you agree with that assessment that this is just a, this is a, a, a battle of the wheels and they want to wear uh, Daryl uh, down, wear his, his mother down, wear you down, and get you, get you all to relent? Absolutely. Mr. Martin, I've never met a more disingenuous set of disrespectful, disruptive adults in my life. It's sad that they're over a school, but that's exactly what they're trying to do. The superintendent has went to, uh, he's, he's actually started sending out mass emails to parents taunting this child, a child. They will put him in a room, hurl insults at him, the administrators, and if he says something, write him up for it. They're stooping to every level they can. And when that doesn't work, they then dangle him in front of my face, Roland. And they tell me things like, oh, don't you want this to end? If you want this to end, why don't you pull this case out of federal court? If you want this to end, oh, don't you want him out of ISS? And it's not going to work. 
But that's exactly what they're doing. Every time I make a move in court, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rowland, here they come. Daryl, are you getting support from fellow classmates? Yes. Demisha, what about you? Are you hearing from other parents? Uh, are they standing with you? Yes. Allie, uh, what is the next step uh, in this legal battle? The next step in this legal battle is that we are not going to remand, we're not going to agree to remand this case and pull it to the state court. So there's going to be a bloody battle, Mr. Roland Martin. That's what's going to happen. And they're trying right now to try to push the case back to state court. I'm getting ready to move forward with an injunction. Since they've opened the door, I'm going to shove it open and step right on through, sir. Litigation. All right. Allie, we appreciate it. Demisha, thanks a bunch. Daryl, thanks a bunch. Uh, good luck in your fight. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. I mean, y'all, I want to start with you. I mean, th this, this is precisely why the Crown Act was passed. And for the district to say, oh, no, and then they, then they went and talked to one of the legislators who sponsored the bill, said, oh, no, my bill uh, didn't mention length. Well, I'm sorry, what, what, what the hell are we talking about then? Yeah, well, so, so yes, this is, this, is about, this is about a lot of things, right? One of them is about the Crown Act. One of them is about sort of black people being able to express themselves in their true beauty and nature and things like this. But I think there's something different that's happening here based on what the attorney was saying, which is each time they push back, they end up sort of, the district ends up upping the ante. This is about a district that has a that has a serious issue or problem with a black young black man or black family asserting their rights right because it seems like every time that 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 um that they 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 seem to like up the ante basically that's what i thought that i heard and and so i'm thinking oh these are this is a district that's saying okay we're going to show you right we're going to show you boy where your place is right so i think that there's so much more than just the natural hair and the crown act i think that there's really this issue of no we're going to tell you people exactly what you have to do and where you have to be and how you have to respond and you're going to do it that's what i'm hearing but th th there's one thing that i'm very concerned about that i do want to address which is i really hope that this young man he, it's, I'm, I'm so concerned because I think that in some ways I understand standing up for your rights and I understand he and his mother's um, position. I'm concerned about the amount of time that, that he's losing in, in school and in education, right? Um, and I hope that the community is able to stand with him and to make sure that that's supplemented in some ways when he's not in detention or when he's not in this other space. Because I'm really concerned about what he's losing out um, in terms of his, his time being educated, quite frankly. You know, I, I, I totally understand uh, that point, uh, Greg. As an educator, I get it. But, but here's what uh, I also realize that we've seen numerous stories like this. And unless somebody decides to stand up and say, we're not going to sit here and keep this up, they're going to target other kids. Uh, we saw, remember a couple of years ago, the black, the black kid who was wrestling, who was on his way to winning, and the referee yeah. literally said, if you do not cut his hair right now, he is yeah. going to be, he's going to have to forfeit this match. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's that sort of thing. And, and what did they do? They actually cut the kid's hair. And it, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was shocking. It was stunning. And it was shameful. Uh, and this is what I want to know. And again, your professor, my young professor, what the hell does the length of hair have to do with getting an education? Well, Roland, uh, you know, as Mignon said, I mean, this is warfare. That little district, that little funky district that he's in, that high school he's in is 3.4% black, 64.8% white as of the latest statistics and about a quarter uh, Spanish-speaking community, but 3.4% black. The entire independent school district that he's in is around the same percentage. This is race war. I'm a graduate of in-school suspension, okay? But I earned mine at Hillsborough High School in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and so, you know, this boy didn't earn his. You know what I'm saying? This is a race war. They're against him. And, and, and when you read the actual legislation, when it says in this section, protective hairstyle includes braids, locks, and twists, and it includes the words grooming, the point you made at the very beginning, Roland, the point you made at the very beginning wipes out any ambiguity. This, this young man wears his hair up. That fits under grooming. 
So even if you had a problem with the length, what the hell are you talking about? Potential length? Let's be deadly clear about this. They're not only going to lose, they're going to pay out some money. Lauren? Yeah, I mean, I'm not clear on what the disposition of the legal case is, but what they just did was retaliatory. I'm not sure whether they're in federal court or state court, but it seems to me that not only do they have a huge case for discrimination, but they just had a moment with clear retaliation against him. Uh, it's not about the length of hair. This is about dominance. It's about control. It's about assimilation. Uh, it's about you have to do what you're told. This has been going on for 400 years. I mean, so there's nothing new here other than the fact that there's a new creative idiot way to annoy somebody who's a member of a minority group that, of course, historically has been uh, in so many ways um, dehumanized. I mean, there's nothing wrong with his hair. He looked fine. This is all ridiculous. The very questioning of it or the very discussion around there's something's wrong with his hair or something is a bunch of nonsense. Uh, and that's the, of course, narrative that they have set up in their head. But I'm shocked that uh, this is a multi-million dollar lawsuit, it seems to me, and they just pulled a major act of retaliation against him that is added to any legal uh, uh, involvement that should be happening here. It's fairly clear. It's going to be interesting to see what the final outcome is. Uh, but this is uh, absolutely about uh, trying to get uh, him and his family to relent. Uh, that's what it is. It is to bring him to his knees. In fact, I dare say this is this school district trying to say, Toby. Yes, sir. That's what they're saying. They are trying to make Daryl and his mama and the lawyer say, Toby. <laughs> that's why they got to keep saying Kunta.